Welcome back, good friends. Brian from Apex Detail here. This is the fourth episode. In the third episode, we left off where I was showing how I take care of areas, problem areas like this. And we took care of this area down to here with the perfect polish. And as you can see, I'm blending it in the way we've done the rest of our um, polishing and correcting. Blending it in up to here. So let's remove the residue and see how the blend looks. Okay, looks like it has blended in fine. So this is where we, the two areas met, the perfect polish and the um, 3D1, and where they came together, it has blended together pretty well. So we can move on. It's the roof, passenger side hood, down to the curvy fender here. And I've made my way to this portion of the passenger side. We're going to work on the headlight bezel, on the grill and vents, and the curvy areas leading up to the top of the fender. With my esteemed colleague back here making headway on the trunk, looking fantastic. I could keep concentrating on the front. We're going to work on these curvy areas and the headlight with a 3-inch polisher and then grab the pneumatic for the vents. The three inch pad and polisher ensures that we're getting all surfaces in the corner here. You wouldn't be able to get this with a five inch or a six inch backing plate and pad. As you can see here, we're getting the areas nice and even with this size. If it was had even more contour and curve, we'd have to go down to the two inch. Under the headlights there, I could try to squeeze the 2-inch pneumatic. Uh, any jump at all will pop it up against the headlight, so we'll just do it by hand.
these tight areas in and around the vents the two inch pneumatic polisher is fantastic just turn the regulator down to about 30 pounds or so and perfect Sometimes polishing by hand with an applicator, microfiber, or foam, or even a foam swab, or a uh, cotton Q-tip, uh, whatever it takes, that's what we have to do. We have it to the point now where we have shaved the single stage um, as far as we plan to which in most areas is not even measurable so it's time to think about protection and prepare for protection and I mentioned in an earlier video how absorbent and porous single stage is if we went to lay down protection on top of this which is going to be a polymer sealant um, maybe one that has a little, little bit of SiO2 on here it's going to soak in and it's going to cure very blotchy so what we need to do is put down a layer foundation and fills in the pores and hardens 
and stops that absorption. And I found a product for that. And I'm going to show that and share that with you right here. A sealant that is in the form of a cream that could be worked in with a machine is going to be the chosen uh, protection when we get to that point. However, we need to stop the absorption. And I did a dedicated video on Flash Pro DPC. This stuff, guys, um, I know some out there are having a little bit of trouble with the product. Um, knowing, uh, getting to, to know it is absolutely huge. A little bit goes a long way. You, you use um, too much product, and it's, it's going to give you some trouble. This stuff is fantastic on single stage and even clear coats that are a bit troubled, that need a little bit of help, uh, that are just too thin to shave to remove all imperfections. This guy here has uh, acrylic fillers, and this is fantastic to use on top of the correction we made. It'll fill in the pores. It'll stop that absorption. Then when we lay down protection on there, it will cure nice and even. This even um, uh, improves the sheen and the overall look as we're applying it, and I'll show you how that's going to happen right now. Shake up the DPC Flash Pro vigorously. It's, it's very viscous. You have to mix in that rich formula to get it to work properly. If you have to heat it up a little bit, um, let it soak in some warm water for about 10-15 minutes. Then shake it up. We have uh, an application pad on here. And this one here is one that we've been using. The single stage uh, has transferred. It's really hard to keep it clean and effective but you don't want to use anything brand new because it's still going to be transferring back onto this pad. Um, even though it's, it's not a very aggressive pad, you're going to get a little bit of transfer. This is a large hood. The three little drops we have on here are going to do half of the surface area of that hood. That's all you have to do there, just one pass. We're not correcting, you just need to get it applied and worked into the paint. Let me bring you in and show you the difference this, that this makes. Obvious, where the acrylic is filling the pores, makes it look better before the protection is even laid down, and will stop that absorption. So I'm going to go ahead and continue around the rest of the car, get that on there, give it some time to cure, then we'll get to protection, and uh, I do need to show you how we take care of the interior um, the delicate materials in the interior of these things as well. 
And that is going to wrap it up for the fourth episode. When we come back for the fifth episode, we are finally going to be ready for protection. I'm going to show you what we chose, how it's applied, the end results. We'll take a look at the interior and how we take care of delicate materials in the interior. And uh, I'll tell you, we are very, getting very close to the completion of this project. Catch you in the next episode.